Oh yeah. That's one of those Iowa gobblers. Long spur, big bushy beard. I'll gladly take you tomorrow. Let's get some good looks at him and I think he wants to, I think he wants to come up here. Yeah, that cobbler's trying to cross the road with only a little under 30 minutes to go. He's working his way to where he wants to roost. I hope this mic's not getting all that wind noise. and got my back to the wind. Hopefully, uh, you can hear me okay. Just crossed into official sunset about a minute, two minutes ago. Typically turkeys fly up the roost, um, you know, where from about official sunset to about 15 minutes after, depending on the terrain, how open it is, how much uh, leaf covers on the trees, you know, you know, how late it is in the season, of course, will dictate that. We're just now starting to see uh, trees around here bud out pretty good. Still a lot of open woods, and so these birds are like likely to go to roost, you know, 10, maybe 15 minutes after official sunset. As we get into May, mid to late May, they'll be flying up right at official sunset, unless they're on a field edge. Now, if they're in the woods, uh, yeah, it's gonna get dark in there, so they're gonna fly up a little earlier. I'm gonna give it about five more minutes and I'll hit my first owl hoot. And I'll do that about every minute or so and nothing gobbles of that, then I'll hit the coyote howl. I never saw that gobbler cross the road. He may have slipped by me, I don't know. If he did, he, he must have slipped down here and crossed. I was way up that way and I thought I could see, see the area he would have crossed. But, who knows, they're, they're sneaky sometimes, they'll slip by you. I just hope he gobbles to let me know where he's at, whether he's over here on this hill or across the valley up on that ridge. Snuck behind me, He's right up there. It startled me. Let's uh, bring up on it real quick and uh, mark him on the map. It's pretty dark out here. gobble right up here. <laughs> he is on poet. Oh, he's in a good spot too. See you guys tomorrow morning. You missing a child or an animal? Oh, okay. 
No, I, I was coyote howling. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I was trying to get that turkey to gobble up on the ridge. Oh. Yeah. Well, you can use any loud noise like a um, an owl hoot, like I was doing. But I guess you you thought that was your dog. No, I just was like, well, I hope it didn't take off after the title. Oh no, <laughs> that was just me. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Good morning, everyone. Had two birds roosted yesterday evening. Had to decide which one I wanted to go after. Both of them roosted out on points. One, I think, we'll call him Gobbler A. I think it's a multiple bearded bird I filmed in a cornfield yesterday evening. And I think he made it across the road and roosted up on a point directly behind me. Then I came down the road and got this one to gobble. This is Gobbler B. Gobbler A. Gobbler A, the public, was at the tip of the point and dropped down the hill. Gobbler B, public was at the point and came back across the point into the field. I felt this was the best odds, even though the other one might have multiple periods. I don't care. I wanted to want the best odds. We got birds gobbling across the valley, but he's roosted down the hill, the side of the hill a little farther than I thought it was. I thought it was closer to the top, but kind of thankful for that, that he's farther down the point and down the hill a little bit, because he was starting to get light when I came up the hill this morning. It's running a little late, plus it's, it's over a 300 foot in elevation climb that I had to do. And, oh my goodness, it was a chore. It was like loose gravel and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, we'll get quiet and get ready to kill this bird, hopefully. several birds to work with. One behind me, at the minimum one behind me, minimum one across, minimum one out front. Could be two each direction.
sound pretty good. But he's on the ground. Quick up with him. He's on the ground. He does what he should do, what they typically do. Just right on the edge.
busted my face. <laughs> but he went down. Oh. You get that camera. How intense was that? Oh my goodness. He was right there. He walked right up behind me. Oh gosh. Oh, I busted my lip. Let me go over and get him before he gets down the hill. Hold it. I guess turkey's fine. It's not mine. <laughs> He doesn't have huge spurs. Oh, then stretched his neck out, but he's got a really, look at that beard. Big old bushy beard. That's what you call intense. I could hear him, I couldn't tell what we're at on the side of the hill he was at, because it's so sharp. And he popped up right behind me. I don't know how far behind me he was, but he was like, 10 yards oh gosh that's the closest i've had a bird behind me just hammering like that yeah i hit my lip pretty good because the way i had to turn around my leg went to sleep and i couldn't it wouldn't work to push me up to roll around the tree he saw me he got a little nervous and and uh kind of buckled his wings like he was getting ready to leave and i made some uh little cuts and stuff and he gobbled, when he gobbled, his head went behind brush, and so then I came on up with a gun, and when he stretched his head up, I, I let him have it. <sighs> I just noticed when I was hanging him up, his toe has a big, big old knot on it. Man, check out that beard. It's not a huge, I mean, it's not a long beard. I'm guessing it's about eight and a half, nine inches. But man, it is thick. nice beautiful eastern i love those dark colors i've seen enough of those uh western birds lighter shade birds that it's nice to see a good old dark eastern yeah there he is check out that fan look at that chocolate fan oh he's beautiful yeah spurs not much of spurs half inch He's been strutting quite a bit. Man, did he have a gobble on him. Oh, I mean, like right here. That was crazy. So loud. I'm thankful I brought my main camera with me just because of having the shotgun mic on it. But, man, I don't think it would have mattered even with just my lapel mic. You can get a feel for how loud it is. Oh, man. Gold Peak Tea. Man, that's some good stuff here. I need some ice to put on my lip. Yeah, I about messed up this morning. Hit the snooze button one too many times. I made up my mind as soon as he gobbled yesterday and I saw the, the maps that you know how the lay of the land here was and the, where the public was that this is the one I was coming after the other one he he's probably down there still would be gobbling and, and walking away and might, and might not even be gobbling just walked away from me I thought I heard some hen yelping but uh early on but I could barely hear it and I guess it was those two jakes doing some jake yelps it was just a couple little soft and I guess that's what I heard and then I heard the J Kelps when he was coming up the hill I knew that he was probably a, an adult bird but I knew he had some Jakes with him at least one and I, I saw one come up the hill yeah beautiful gobbler I'm just thankful that he didn't go flopping down the hill 300 feet down to the bottom or 350 feet whatever it is so it's more than 300 feet I looked at our next last night and I was like, oh my goodness, 300, 
plus feet up an incline that's more than 45 degrees. I would take 10 steps this morning and not have to stop. It was like loose stone and stuff. I was rolling back down the hill. And it was already starting to get light when I, when I was crest getting up here. And thankfully, he was roosted farther down than I thought. I, I looked at the map as I was coming up the hill, and I'm like, oh, I'm getting dangerously close to where I think he's roosted. I, and I hope I don't bump him out of the tree. But it was still some, you know, pretty dark at that point. I was able to see the just in front of me a little bit. And then when I got up here and sat down, I, I wasn't sure if he was back this way or, or down that way. I just knew that he was up here somewhere and I thought that was away from him, but you never know. And so I sat down this tree this, you know, had a cluster of little trees around it. it looked like it'd be a good spot to help break up my outline and you know, just kind of hide me a little better. And I can look right down the point here. I love these hill country gobblers. That's why I get this Iowa tag because this is very similar to the area in Minnesota I like hunting. 